What's up, movie lovers? I'm Mike, and this is Gotta Love Them Movies. It stinks. Guys, you guys, welcome back to Gotta Love Them Movies. Uh, today, we're doing a not a movie review, uh, but a television review. Uh, normally we, you know, stick to all things film and, 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 you know, movies, news and, you know, that kind of stuff. But today we're going to do a TV review of Doom Patrol. Uh, Doom Patrol is kind of a superhero, ye superhero dash Y, um, comic book property. It's definitely a comic book property. Uh, it's a DC Comics type thing. It's loosely tied into the Justice League, if you're familiar with the Justice League. Just loosely. Very, very, very loosely. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But, uh, Doom Patrol is uh, a fantastic. An absolutely fantastic property. Um, we're just talking about Season 1 here. Uh, gonna do a review of Season 2 later. So, if you're here for a, a Season 2 review, you have to wait. This is just a Season 1 review of Doom Patrol. So, what is Doom Patrol? Okay, well, in order to really describe... you, There's no real describing Doom Patrol. It's... It's a show, it's an experience, it's just something that you have to watch, you have to experience, you can't really, it's hard to describe what it is, but I'm, I'm going to do my best without spoilers. So, um, we just kind of need to do a rundown of some of the characters. So, uh, first character you see, first and foremost, is like this giant robot dude right in the middle of the photo there. Um, his name is Cliff Steele. Cliff is uh, played by uh, Brendan Fraser, brilliantly played by brilliant Fra uh, Brendan Fraser. Brilliant Fraser? That's what it should be. He's played by Brilliant Fraser because this is such a great performance. Um, and it's great to see Brendan Fraser kind of come back after having, you know, if you, I'm not going to go into uh, Brendan Fraser's past and like and all the stuff that he had to deal with, but. Um, it's nice to see him back in front of the camera again. He's been gone too long. He's, he's a national treasure. He's a true gem. Um, I just love seeing, I love seeing Brendan Fraser on screen, but in this incarnation as a giant robot man, he's a foul mouthed robot with an attitude and it's hilarious. Like it's truly funny, truly, truly funny. Uh, next on the roster, we have Jane, uh, brilliantly played by Dan Diane Guerrero. Um, she is, uh, so her whole thing is she has, I think it's like 67 personalities, uh, in her brain and each person, it's like multiple personality disorder, but each personality has their own superpower. So like, um, uh, I think there's a there's a personality named Flit, and Flit can like instantly transport from like you know one place to another, blink, just in the blink of an eye. Uh, there's another uh, personality. I think her name is Karen, uh, and Karen uh, can make you fall in love with her just by you know you staring into her eyes. Um, uh, there's uh, there's there's so many different personalities. Uh, Hammerhead is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, just a really super tough, strong girl, um, who like with a wicked personality with a biting tongue. Uh, what like a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful character. Uh, Jane is definitely one of my favorite characters in the show. Uh, next we have Matt Bomber playing the character of Larry Trainer, aka Negative Man. Um, this, I mean, he looks like uh, the Invisible Man from, like, the 1930s, 1940s films. Uh, he has that same kind of, like, look to him, but Larry Trainer is a former uh, fighter pilot. Um, he had this, uh, well, I mean, like, again, I'm not going to go into the whole, uh, whole history of it, but he has, like, this... Uh, what he calls, or I guess what they call the negative spirit kind of, like, living inside of him. It's like this electricity blue thing that comes out it's like it's like what it's it's crazy this show is absolutely bananas it's bonkers uh next we have rita Farr, played by april bowlby um uh, I'm not familiar with anything else that April Bowlby has done, uh, but in this she plays a kind of like a 1940s, 1950s, 1960s Hollywood star, um, and uh, she, uh, something happens to her and she's now part of the Doom Patrol. And, and an interesting thing about all these characters is they're all from a different time period. 
Um, so uh, Rita Farr is from I think she's I think she's from the fifty late fifties. Uh, Larry Trainer. Um, his story starts in I think it's the sixties. Uh, Jane, her story starts in the seventies. Cliff Steele, his story starts in the eighties, uh, and then that brings us to Cyborg and. Uh, Played by Jovian Wade. Um, I will say not brilliantly. Not brilliantly played by Jovian Wade. Um, I, I, I don't like his take on the character. I don't think he's a very good actor personally. That being said, uh, it's kind of cool to see like uh, Cyborg. Cyborg. Cyborg uh, in the show. He's, this is kind of like the time period before he joins the Justice League. And, you know, fights with Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and all that. Um so, yeah, so Cyborg's in this, and his story, again, kind of takes place in the 90s. And it, and let's round off the cast with Timothy Dalton playing the Chief. Uh, so the Chief is kind of, he's if you want to compare it to, like, Charles Xavier, or kind of like the, I mean, it's it's an obvious comparison, with, given that he's in a wheelchair, but he's kind of the guy who rounds up all these characters and kind of brings them all together. He isn't... He isn't trying to create a super group of a, a super team. He's not trying to create a super team. They get into his role and why he's important and all that stuff later in the series. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's there's a reason for everybody living in this house, right? And so everybody lives in this in this big huge house together, and, and, and you know that's the cast. And they go off on these wacky wacky adventures. Their main nemesis, oh. Oh, their main nemesis, played truly, truly brilliantly by Alan Tudyk, Mr. Nobody. This, the Mr. Nobody, his character narrates all, like, the whole story. And it's so interesting. It's the narrative style that they choose with this. Um, he's, I mean, like, yeah, he's kind of the narrator, but he's also a character in the show and the way they do it, it, it seems pretty straightforward. Well, he's the narrator and he's also a character. And so this is from his perspective. It is. And it isn't like, again, like you have to see the show to really understand what it is. But here's the thing. Doom Patrol is crazy. This show is completely bonkers. You have all these weird, wacky characters, and they go off on all these weird, wacky adventures, right? They go through time portals, and they go to other dimensions, and they go inside of Jane's mind and meet all of the multiple personalities. And, you know, Cyborg is, he's a cyborg, he's half man, half human, or half, uh, half human, half uh, machine kind of thing. Uh, and, like they all have, they're all struggling with their own insecurities. And that is what makes this show work. They're all dealing with their own insecurities and they all hate each other for whatever reason, but they're brought together because they've nowhere else to go. They've nowhere else to go. Um, uh, the, the general kind of idea, the story, if there is a plot or like, like a season arc or something is that the chief has gone missing myth missing the chief has gone missing um again not going to get into the here's and the why's and the how's and all that stuff but the chief has gone missing and now this misfit band of people some of whom have superpowers go off and try to get the chief back uh for whatever reason like they all have their own reasons for why they need the chief in their life and, uh, and so they go off looking for the chief and that just leads them on this wacky we, and it's like, I keep saying weird and wacky adventures. That is an understatement there. I think it's in the second episode or maybe the third episode. I can't remember. Uh, they end up going to an alternate dimension again. Like I'm not, I'm not really giving anything away here. You guys, they go to an alternate dimension where the portal is through the mouth of a donkey. And, and then the, you know, it's, it's, it sounds weird and, and, and strange, and it is, uh, but the way that they deal with all these weird, wacky adventures um, is really smart, and it's clever. It's a well-told story. It's an interesting story, and most importantly, it's a character-driven story. Those are the stories that I'm most uh, attracted to, are stories that are about individual characters and this is like a band of individual characters and they all have their strange oddities or insecurities or whatever season one of doom patrol 
absolutely kills it. Now, the last episode, admittedly so, the last episode lost me. The last episode of season one. The season finale didn't quite do it for me. Uh, but yeah, episodes one through 12, I was hooked. From halfway through episode one, I was in it to win it. I completely loved it. Um, it reached out. It grabbed me. It was interesting. It's funny. Um, it actually tells us morality stories about ourselves. Because whatever character um, that they're focusing on, whether it's Cliff, whether it's Jane, whether it's Larry Trainer, whether it's Rita Farr, whether it's Cyborg, whether it's uh, you know the chief himself... There's, there's something for you, the viewer, to connect with any one of these characters. Not just any one, but multiple characters. Uh, and especially like when you're dealing with Jane, there's so much there. It deals with, um, you know, the fallout of stress. It deals with um, uh, mental health. It like really uh, deals a lot with mental health. Um, it deals with struggling with your sexuality and figuring out who you are and why that's important. Um, uh, vanity and how destructive vanity is. Uh, hubris. Um, like there, there's, oh man, there, there's so much about the show that is just bizarre. It's so weird, but it's also so poignant and touches you from a personal level. Um, uh, same thing with Mr. Nobody. His story, I mean, he yes, he's the villain of, of the show. But he's also kind of not. You Like, when you see the show, and when you understand the show, and you understand the context of, uh, context of what's going on, he's like Magneto, right? Magneto is such a great villain in the X-Men uh, comics because you can side with his, you know, point of view you understand where it is that he's coming from dr doom, well dr doom is a little I mean, he's a little more on uh, less on the fence but i mean still like you understand where these characters are coming from and why they're doing what they're doing are they the villain yeah but also kind of not it's so fascinating and it's such a great character study and a, a, a learning tool about like who we are like i said it's completely it's so poignant. It's crazy, but it makes sense. Um, I can't recommend season one of Doom Patrol enough. It is, I thought it was going to be the best show on television, period. Uh, I thought that there's no way that this isn't going to sweep all the Emmys. Um, I mean, Watchmen ended up sweeping all the Emmys, so you know more on that later, but Doom Patrol is so fantastic. Again, like I said, the last episode of the season, of season one, it lost me. It, it went off the rails a little bit. Um, and in my in my personal opinion, not in a great way. So is that a spoiler? Maybe. But again, I'm not telling you anything specific about the episode. Um, you know, definitely go off and check that, check that out for yourself. But yeah, Doom Patrol, I can't recommend it enough. It's smart. It's it's I hate it's so weird to say like is it intellectual television? I would argue that it is. The way the story is constructed, the way the characters are constructed, the way the story is told, uh, what they choose to focus on, and all of the little details of everything that you know people are struggling with. It's it's fascinating. It's important. It's I dare say it's kind of important. Again, not as important as other television shows that are dealing with more kind of social issues. Um, there are more important television shows out there, but Doom Patrol is entertaining. Uh, it's raunch. It's really raunchy. Don't start watching this thinking, oh, this is going to be a fun, excuse me, a wholesome kind of comic book show. It is not. It, it would be akin to the raunch of Deadpool, if not crank it up a few notches. It's, it's raunchy, but it's also fascinating. It's good. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's, it's warm. Uh, it's touching. Like There are moments of the show where you kind of want to cry with the characters because they've done such a, a, such a great job at establishing who these characters are and why you should care about them. Anyway, guys, 
those are just my thoughts about season one of Doom Patrol. Have you had a chance to check it out? Um, I would be very interested uh, in hearing your thoughts. So yeah, did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Let me know down in the comment section below. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you really like this video, click subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, click share. Because that is exactly what this dinosaur would want you to do. Rawr, rawr, rawr!